Hi, Anna. Anna. Nice to see you, Rachel, Mary Ellen and Ray. Yeah. How are you all? Good. Great. Yeah, good. Really good. Good. Ready for a chat? Yes. So am I. So this lady in London had a bucket list before she died. She had stage four cancer and the first thing on her bucket list was to say bye-bye to her husband of 28 years. Ladies, oh, what's on goodness. your bucket oh. list? <laughs> <laughs> not divorce, that's for sure. <laughs> and not divorce when I have a 19-year-old and a 16-year-old at home who are like, yeah, it's fine, Mum, you can just go and live in a flat with someone else, that's OK. Oh, it just does my mind in. I don't but understand. she didn't go to Did live it? with someone exactly. else. Didn't, didn't she? she? didn't have oh. anyone to go to. Oh, OK. Yeah. I'm like, good for you, honey. Yeah, well... Yeah, she like, said she didn't do it because she wanted a change in her love life. Oh, she just okay. wanted a change in her life. So I think she mm. felt like she was a, a mom. She who felt was, trapped. Yeah. If if you had, like, if you were facing the end of your life and you had this massive stress come from mm. the diagnosis of cancer, I would want to do the same thing if I was in that situation. I would be like, yeah, I want the rest of my life to feel free. Like, I just, mm. I applaud her for having the courage to do it. Get out of the toxic relationship? Yes. I think that's what was unsaid, like, when we're looking at this story. There obviously is something in the background that made her feel like she needed to get out of the relationship mm. and that her kids were saying, yes, we encourage you to do it. There's something unspoken there. Well, in the, the article she talked about how her, she was still the housewife, she was still doing all this stuff, she still felt really trapped and that's just not how she wanted to finish her life. Do you think that's what happens? I mean, even, yeah, you can be married and be in a toxic relationship, but even, like, the change as from being a single woman mm -hmm. to being a mother, you know, something happens, a paradigm shift. Did you think she's maybe going through, like, I don't know, a midlife crisis? <laughs> I don't know. I think, that, I think that there must have been something more happening because there are many women who are, you know, taking care of their families and they feel quite fulfilled doing that. Yeah. But I think that the fact that she wanted to leave that relationship, there must have been something behind the scenes happening besides her feeling trapped under being I a stay-at-home mom cooking just dinners. allowed her the platform to do it. Yeah, and she the was just saying, exactly, it. she didn't want to spend those last few years being in this toxic relationship. Yeah. What defines toxic for you? Well, I mean, a, a lot of people, their standard of toxic could be... You know, you don't see it until you step out of the relationship. Yeah, does toxic just mean not being able to do what you want to do to have it's freedom? It's for each person, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. No, well, is that subjective? Yeah. I think that, um, like, when you look at it, I think she was only given a very short amount of time to live and she ended up living beyond the amount of time that they gave her. So right. I think it's kind of like we don't think about all the other factors that are um, Im impacting our health. Yeah. Besides... ABC Radio, a couple of years ago, I heard a story and I've never forgotten it. And there was a study done on a particular group of people who did have cancer but they left toxic relationships and their life expectancy. Some of them were actually healed and came through. Wow, like this lady. Oh, really? This so lady. I think toxic <laughs> relationships play a major role in our health and we don't necessarily oh, realise so much it. And that's know. why I applaud her. Yeah, for sure. When you're going through a difficult situation, how do you get through, Mary uh, Well, this is my question when I read this article. Like, what kind of a role does faith play in a situation like this? Because the article did say that her the condition had made her turn away from God. And so... In this situation, I don't think I would ever do this, only because I know that my life here is temporary. And so that gives me a lot of peace and that would help me get through it. So I don't know about you guys, but... Yeah, I think that she said that she was mad at God, like, yeah. because the, the cancer had come back twice. First she had breast cancer and then the cancer had then appeared in her leg. So I think she was angry at God. Mm. She wasn't, she didn't understand why the cancer came back to her life again, you know? Yeah. Mm. And I know similarly, like, when I have hard situations, I do turn to faith, like, um, but I, I've never had cancer. I would hope yeah, that exactly. if that were to happen to me that I would continue to turn to God in that mm. situation. Yeah, I think as women of faith, I know in Proverbs it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean unto your own understanding. And I think when we go through certain things, maybe we should lean back to God or, you know, find some sort of spiritual help mm -hmm. or even get a good support network of ladies like you are, all well, for me. <laughs> <laughs> I think too. I think like we never know what the hardest situation is going to be that we're ever going to experience in our life. So we can never practice for that moment. But I think if in all the other tiny moments, we're always practicing so that when that big moment comes, if we do get diagnosed with cancer or some other major thing happens, we've been practicing. Mm. So when that moment comes, we're able to lean on God and, you know. Mm. I like, I like that perspective. Very interesting. Tell us what you think. How do you get through or what's on your bucket list? We'd love to hear from you. Check us out on FB, Insta or just subscribe to our YouTube channel.